I do as a creative nomad on the road and the reason for all those links below the description to my videos. It is my opinion from my experience and those YouTube YouTubers and all those people that I listen to that in America those who work online must use more than one source or platform to make a go of it and most that I have researched do those I follow on YouTube they also usually have a blog or sell their uh, merch or their t-shirts online and then they also show up at shows or rallies or conventions with the kinds of merchandise they create or the thing that they do um, as a YouTuber. For example, once I make an illustration, I then turn it into not only a fabric design, but also often a color book page. I check my swatches for the color, the clarity, uh, sharpness, the detail. Um, here I received a roll of prints to be cut up into smaller prints and my planner for video ideas and promotion things that I am trying to keep straight. Once I order the proofs and check them, I can put them in my shop and then they become what is called passive income. What financial advisors call passive income has a finite start and stop time to create but an infinite amount of time after it goes somewhere to be sold. It can continue on being sold. And it's different than being like at a farmer's market booth where you're selling your vegetables. You're not actually doing the selling, so it's called passive. Nook and Kindle eBooks are a good example of passive income. These take a long time to build revenue sometimes, or the author can choose to aggressively market their eBooks which does not make for a very passive income. In fact, it does a lot of work and can easily take up to a full 40 hour work week just to market the eBooks in order to generate an income. I have done both, but I usually stick to a schedule of marketing my books so that I work on them a few months of the year and allow them to be passive income the other parts of the year. So while waiting, the other things I do are illustrate, design fabric from my illustrations. Um, I'm a YouTuber and I am also writing another book. I'm also working on a project that has involved writing and some stunt work and a lot of hilarity and its working title is called Hashtag RV Life. As I travel around as a nomad in my RV, I find that the area of exposure has influenced what kinds of things I draw. While at the Oregon coast, I worked on a coastal botan botanicals fabric and when I went to the mountains in early fall, I got ideas for another color book and also a bunny rabbit campground from the campground that had so many rabbits hopping around. Next month is one of the months that I dedicated to writing and author stuff. It all started with NaNoWriMo, which is the organization that encourages people to write a novel in a month because November is supposedly author month or something like that. I don't join up anymore, but I do like to use the motivation and encouragement that is on almost every social media platform available to us all, and uh, many are YouTube videos and Instagram hashtags that I get a hit of motivation from. I also have a secret recipe this year though, possibly a sinister recipe. And here it is. This prehistoric looking monster is supposedly in the lake, possibly even two of them, and makes people write and write often. The Aquina Bay monster was caught by the Night Watchman in 1992. So we shall see. Another rumor is that the lake is possibly possessed by an elk that was shot long ago and its head fell into the water, possessing the lake and those that swim there. To sum it all up as a digital nomad, instead of waiting for motivation to come to me, I can go where it seeps in through the water, so to speak. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel.